So a bit about me, so I'm a Brazilian living in the UK. I've been working for the BBC for the last three years and a half. Um, I graduated in computer engineering uh, in Brazil. Um, I've been a software developer for 18 years and I'm really passionate about open source. Um, and I've been using Apache Bean since early 2019. Um, what I'm presenting here is the result of the work of several people. Uh, so all these photos and names you can see there are people who directly contributed to this work. And uh, this work is in the context of one squad inside one team inside the BBC. So our squad is hummingbirds, but there are other teams doing other types of work using Apache Bean. So some business context. Um, my squad was targeted with replacing an external third party recommendation engine provider um, to personalize millions, to personalize the experience of millions of users uh, in this app, BBC Sounds. Um, so we had around, we had, this product has around 200,000 episodes and it has more or less 6.5 million of users. Um, and we had to choose the top nine or 12 episodes, depending on which app the user was using. So to give an idea of how much of the content we had, it was as if the content was all of this, every people here. And um, we had to spot this tiny yellow dot over here uh, to see what would be potentially meaningful for a user. Um, also, added to the actual prediction process of using machine learning to, to try to rank and decide which is the most meaningful content for a user. The BBC also has some rules. So we had to apply some rules on top of the recommendations that we created. So some of them relate to the recency of the content, diversify, so we didn't have many things of the same branch. Uh, if we were recommending, for instance, um, an episode of a drama, make sure we were recommending another which made sense. If the user had already watched an item, to recommend the following one. Um, also, don't recommend uh, Gaelic content to users who never listened to Gaelic or didn't have a meaningful interaction with Gaelic episodes, among other rules. Um, Technology-wise, what we used was Python, um, Google Cloud Platform, um, and therefore the Dataflow Runner for Apache Bean. We used Apache Airflow to orchestrate the work. And the choice for the machine learning model was quite interesting, was LightFM, um, which is uh, not one of the most popular machine learning frameworks that's out there, but it was one that our data scientists had evaluated and they were quite happy with the results. So the overall of our pipeline. So we processed user activity on one stream. On the other, we processed uh, the content metadata. We trained the model. Then we would predict for each user, for a batch of users, and then we would apply some rules. Um, so one of the first questions we had was, uh, would we be able to do the both the prediction and application of rules on the fly, or would we have to pre-compute those to be able to meet our SLAs? So our SLAs were 1,500 requests per second, each of them under 60 milliseconds. So we run some A-B tests, um, comparing both the on-the-fly approach where we searched the model, uh, we hosted it, and we, pre -compute, we computed on the fly per request. And we also adopted the strategy where we previously pre-computed recommendations, and then we put it inside regis, and then we would just surface pre-computed recommendations. As expected, the pre-computed recommendations had uh, better performance from a serving point of view. Um, and it, it just felt it was the easy way to go. So, um, because it was quite safe and it just directly matched our SLAs. So once we decided pre-compute was the path, we started analyzing how fast would we be able to pre-compute recommendations and how much resources we would need for that. So there were some analysis where we compared for let's say 100, 1,000 users, if we wanted to, uh, to pre-compute recommendations given, for instance, 100,000 items, 
how long it would take in seconds. And uh, we made some estimates and the idea was, okay, so more or less to pre-compute recommendations, it will cost us around $10. Um, here was actually pounds, but anyway. So um, there were some other challenges which we didn't, we weren't able to compute precisely the cost. So for instance, the algorithm we used, the model wouldn't return the items sorted. So we noticed that if we were to sort in Python, for instance, we would have very high costs to, to sort those items for each of the millions of users we were pre-computing recommendations. So to just sort 100K predictions wasn't very efficient. Um, so this, all these parts which have uh, the orange box were implemented using Apache Beam. Uh, we ended up deciding to split the rules into two steps, rules which weren't dependent on a user, that were they were the same for all users. So those we applied before uh, predicting, and we've applied only the personalized rules after prediction. And the idea was, of course, not to have to do the same thing for millions of users if we could just run it once. Um, so the pipeline evolution. This was the first version of the pipeline we implemented. Um, and as you can see here, we were using by the time Apache Beam 2.15, which is quite old, uh, we attempted to use the standard uh, machine type. We noticed by the time um, that uh, whenever we tried to use auto-scaling for most of the tasks we were running, it would incur in costs of around 15% more than when we actually delimited the amount of workers we wanted to set. So we were trying that strategy for this pipeline, which would both uh, pre-compute recommendations given a model and also uh, apply the rules we had to apply. Um, so as you can see, it was quite a long pipeline. This is a bit more in detail how the steps looked like. Uh, so in one branch, we would retrieve um, items which a user consumed because those were needed for some rules. Um, on the other branch, we would iterate through the users, um, predict the recommendations for them, rank things, sort, and then we would apply several of the business rules. Um, it looked a bit funny with these names, but that was just the first version. Um, so although that version worked quite nicely for some sample data and examples. When we tried to run it for our dev and production data, it didn't quite work. So this was the type of error we would see. So um, the workers would lost contact with the service. Um, as we investigated in, in data flow, so the way we investigated was to see in Google Cloud the VMs where they were running things and monitor those VMs. And what we learned from there was that um, the workers were trying to load in memory the model um, and they were running out of memory. Um, and, and then they would, the VM would get killed and, and Dataflow would lose the connection and everything would fail. So, we reviewed what were exactly the sizes of the data we were trying to bring into memory to be able to pre-compute the recommendations and also to apply the rules. So these are more or less the sizes of things we were having there. So for pre-compute, for instance, we needed the model in memory and uh, we also needed part of this mapping data. And for the rules, we needed the consumed items, the consumption history, um, and, and the output of the predictions and also candidate items. So um, what we noticed was we did need quite some memory to be able to run that. And it was not, it wouldn't fit the standard VMs uh, that were used by Dataflow. So um, our first strategy was to try to increase to what we thought was a minimal amount of RAM. Um, and that wasn't enough. And then we went really crazy, just trying to see if that was really the issue with our pipeline. And we increased to this gigantic instance with 40 vCPU and over 900 gigabytes of RAM. We were completely insane. Um, and 
so we would have 24 gigabytes of run per core. Um, and this allowed us to run the pipeline, but of course at a very high cost. So we tried to refactor a bit the pipeline without any major changes. We attempted to run some reshuffles. We, both, we used both the shuffle service and the reshuffle function, but they were quite expensive for the data we were trafficking between each step. Um, and we tried to increase the amount of workers to get some speed. By the time, we even attempted to try to control the parallelism that was happening inside data flow. So we were a bit confused about how it would handle threads and how it would work, handle the containers or the Python processes. And we were just trying to limit with those things so we could try to have the optimal ratio of things which had to be loaded in memory and threads. So that was by the time our understanding, things are quite different from this right now. And what we did by the time was, um, of course, get support of the community. So we wrote uh, some stack uh, overflow post, and we also posted in Twitter um, for some advice. And, and we had very good responses, So which helped us planning the further steps. So one of the replies was, hey, uh, we just published this uh, blog post on running ML inference in data flow pipelines, which I think will be another talk. Um, but this was only in December. We were in September by then. And we also uh, had some feedback from Sergey, who by the time was the PM of data flow in Google. Um, so there were two answers to the Stack Overflow post. One of them was for us to use the shared resource, which we're not using yet, which was available since being 2.24. The other one was uh, to actually uh, use a different way of defining custom images using this um, ext parameter, which allowed you to have more flexibility on setting the ratio between CPU and memory, which was very helpful. Um, so with that feedback, we did some refactoring, we built this pipeline, uh, and we successfully were able to run this pipeline for, I don't know, 4 million users and using comparing them to over 100K items we were trying to recommend for. These were the parameters we used by the time. and. This allowed us to deliver the personalized recommendations for BBC Sounds, which resulted from a business perspective in almost 60% of increase in users' interactions. And it doubled the interactions with people who are under 35, which are a focus of the BBC. So this pipeline, even though it wasn't optimal, it allowed us to gain this. And however, there was a cost with that. So the cost we had was that it was costing 279 pounds per run. And our idea was to pre-compute as often as we could because we wanted to give users fresh recommendations, right? And this, this price was just not, not feasible. Um, and the pipeline was quite stable, um, except for instance on let me see. I think this was earlier this year, March this year, when it stopped working uh, with this message, no space left. Um, and we went to analyze, did our model grow crazily? What is going on? We compared the successful run and unsuccessful run. And we realized, wait, but this pipeline is now using shuffle. And we hadn't enabled for this because it didn't work for the way the pipeline had been designed. Uh, so, and reading the documentation, we found out that whenever you use shuffle, the default for the disk usage is 25 gigabytes, which would probably not be enough given the amount of vCPUs we had in the VM and the parallel processing and the fact we were not using shared memory may just try to load lots of things. So, uh, we contacted Google and we didn't know, but they had switched the default and we had to set this, this parameter so it would behave as it was behaving before. Because at that point in time, they just switched on as the default behavior for data flow to have the shuffle service enabled. 
Um, and then we knew we couldn't continue with the costs as they were. So um, David, who was one of the major contributors to the cost improvements, um, he compared our problem to having to do a hard surgery. And uh, we split the problem in a few steps. So the first step was considering our pipeline was a patient. We would just try to do some pain relief strategy where we would attempt some easy cost saving things such as trying charge memory and flex RS without any major change to the pipeline itself. Um, if that didn't work, we would attempt to compute recommendations for a subset of users who had interacted with the app. So we would value the users who were heavier users. And the last attempt was to do a proper split of the pipeline. So for applying the rules, we didn't need as much memory. Um, and if perhaps we isolated uh, the predict step from the application of rules, then we could have significant cost savings. And by the time, whenever we use this for the recommended free rail, we noticed that half the time of the Beam pipeline was predicting recommendations, half was applying rules. So the first attempt was um, given our pipeline, let's try to use shared memory. Um, and the way we tried to iterate through this was let's get run the pipeline only for 0.5% of the users so we don't spend all that money on the attempts. And let's try to change things and use shared memory within the pipeline. There was already some strange thing when we did this, because even though we got 0.5 of the users, uh, the amount that the pipeline costed was not proportional to the users. So it was a sort of red flag that there was something else wrong with the pipeline. Uh, but anyway, we, we continued this analysis. So we started trying to change the custom uh, machine we were using, reducing the ratio between uh, processors and vCPU until we managed to get 77% um, uh, of cost reduction for 0 Dodge 5 users. So we were very excited. Yes, we're going to save lots of money. However, when we try to run the same pipeline for 100% of the users, it would take hours and hours and not complete. It was very inefficient and it actually costed more than the initial implementation, some of those attempts. Uh, we reviewed our pipeline and as we predicted initially, there were some inner issues on how we declared the interfaces. So on each of these steps, the pipeline was a database agnostic and we would decorate all the items with all the programmatic data we had to have involved. So we were trafficking lots of data across each of these steps. And we assumed potentially that could be one of the reasons why um, shared memory didn't uh, work well once we had more users um, and but the, the result was promising because we thought okay if we isolate the predict step then we can use shared memory and we should be able to use flex rs as well which would allow us to have preemptible instances so we ended up going to the heart surgery approach because although the second attempt we planned was let's just try to compute recommendations for Delta of users. Once we realized that to compute predictions for just parts of the users wasn't efficient, we just decided, okay, let's go for the heart surgery. So the plan was let's split pr the prediction step, which is the one which requires more memory. Um, and we do the business rules in a separate step. So we will have two different pipelines. We agreed on the interface between them. And this is how um, the first pipeline looked like, uh, which was implemented by David. So it was very neat. He based his work on the Google blog post, which had been recommended to us beforehand as well. So we started using auto scaling again. He noticed it was really important to set the number of threads. Um, we enabled FlexRS, which allowed us to uh, have preemptible instances and scheduling the job to happen in the near future, giving lots of savings. 
um, and we were able uh, to use one of the standard data flow images without having to use a uh, custom. As part of this work, um, as recommended in the blog post, we also adopted batching and shared memory. So savings wise, um, this pipeline performed really well. So, oops, um, the cost to run this for 100K episodes for 3.5 million users worth 48 pounds. If we were only considering a poll of 300 episodes from which we wanted to recommend, which was a case of another rail, it cost us only three pounds. And if we had less items, it would be even less than one pound. The other work we did was on the business rules. So the business rules, one of the inputs would be the predictions generated by the first pipeline. Um, this one would be responsible for reading from multiple data sources which were needed. And inside each of these boxes, we would transform the data to the minimal representation required for each of the transformations. So before we had the Python generic rules implementation, and this was very bean specific. So when we expand the pipeline, this is how it looks with all the rules and all the bits and pieces. So we were able to run all the rules we had with all the most complex rules for 3.5 million users for less than one pound. So when we sum the these two pipelines, which were the result of the heart surgery, we were able to reduce a pipeline which costed almost 300 pounds to 50 pounds. Um, and some other variants of this being pipeline ended up becoming less than five pounds. So we were able to have a significant cost reduction. Um, some takeaways. Um, it is always useful to keep representative data when we're implementing and trying out the pipelines. Uh, even the worst being pipeline you might write without much knowledge on the tool is better than none. We were able to give the BBC business uh, goals, we reached business goals, even with something which wasn't the best. Um, reducing the scope is a good point to start. Some, some of the strategies we used to reduce costs were applying non-personalized rules beforehand. And we also uh, changed the problem of sorting recommendations to a subset. So we just sorted the first thousand items opposed to the first 100,000 items. Um, using custom machines uh, might limit using other things such as FlexRS. Currently only two machine types are supported should be able to use FlexRS and preemptive instances in data flow. Shared memory, if you don't have uh, a niche pipeline, uh, might not result in as much in cost savings. Uh, to have minimal interfaces between pipelines and between the steps of a pipeline can lead to more predictable behaviors and better cost planning. And splitting a pipeline, depending on your case, can be extremely uh, cost efficient. Um, so that's it, thank you very much.